ABDL game. Brian could not understand how he had managed it. After months of talking, he had finally conned his wife into playing baby games with him. He lay on the floor listening to her cooing softly to him, the time for playing games is over, Brian. I've made your fantasy come true. You've been changed into a real baby, you'll be my baby boy forever and ever. You know I've always wanted a baby. I was so sad when I found out we couldn't have one. You should have told me before we got married that you were sterile. Since you can't father a baby, you'll take the place of the baby you should have given me, she teased. You'll be my baby instead, so I'll have my wish too. Brian smiled at the thought of being her baby. Somehow just saying it had made it seem true. Kathy's the perfect mommy for me, he thought as he recalled the events of the past ten hours. She had diapered him before going to bed and held him while he suckled her teats like a baby. He had fallen asleep in her arms, his face nestled between her ample breasts. When he awoke in the morning, she had given him warm cocoa in a baby bottle and let him lie on the rug. He was surprised at the slightly bitter taste of the cocoa, he supposed that she had put in too much cocoa powder when she made it. Still, the sweet chocolatey mixture tasted good and the mildly cloying flavour brought back pleasant childhood memories. He sucked on his bottle and watched morning cartoons on TV while she sat on the couch and knitted. When he told her he needed to pee, she told him to go ahead and use his diapers. He relaxed and let himself dribble a little into his diaper. All at once, his control vanished and he found himself soaking his diaper like a toddler. Brian lay on his back and reveled in the feelings his warm diaper gave him. He felt the wetness spread over the front of his diaper and creep down between his legs, soaking his bottom. He seemed to pee endlessly. He couldn't have stopped even if he had wanted to. He imagined this was exactly how a baby felt while wetting. As he wet, he fingered the buttons on his soft flannelette nightshirt unconsciously as if he was a real baby. The flannelette shirts was another surprise of his wife's. True, the shirt was horribly tight across the chest and abdomen when it was buttoned, but the fabric felt like the same sort of textile that was used to make baby clothes. The flannelette was soft and warm and made it easy to imagine he was a baby again. She had made it herself, and although the dimensions across the chest and stomach was wrong for even his ultra-slim physique, she had made a number of changes to the pattern that made it seem more baby-like. The sleeves of the garment had been cut extremely close to the shoulder so that they were only two inches long. The shirt itself only barely reached the top of his diaper, leaving a babyish gap of two inches between the top of his diaper and the bottom of his shirt. He wriggled in delight at the sensation of the soft fabric preening the skin of his back as the flow of urine diminished rapidly and need to pee was replaced by another, more demanding physical urge. He glanced down at his diaper over his short-cut shirt and saw a huge bulge growing in the front of his diaper. He had gotten an enormous erection. The warm, wet fabric caressed his bottom and penis lovingly as he rocked his bottom against the squishy mass. Brian crooned softly to himself in a semi-conscious sexual euphoria. His low moan of ecstasy captured Kathy's attention and brought her quickly to his side. She picked up the bottle which he had dropped forgotten to the carpet and had begun slowly dripping cocoa on the rug. She looked down at her helpless husband, slipped three fingers beneath the top of his diaper and smiled strangely, then began to change his diaper. First, she opened the lower buttons of his shirt up to the top button of his collar and spread the inner corners of his shirt wide open so it wouldn't get soiled during the diaper change. He watched intently as she folded the triangular flaps of his shirt back and shivered in anticipation. When she unsnapped his plastic incontinent pants and unfastened his diaper, he moaned again in unbridled pleasure. Waves of ecstasy washed over him. He was dizzy with delight. The room seemed to telescope in and out around him. He had never been this horny before. His time sense speeded up and slowed down in cycles. One moment she seemed to be in slow motion, then the next moment her hands flitted about like a hummingbird's wings. She stroked the end of his penis lightly with the tips of her fingers before removing his sopping diaper. Oh mommy. Mommy, he murmured in response to her touch. 
The room started to spin around him and he lay back on the rug abandoning himself completely to his passions. It was a dream come true. This was the experience, a magical, a mystical journey beyond his wildest imaginings. This was transcendental. His back arched in a spasm of pleasure that made every muscle in his body quiver with strain. Brian climaxed, spurting cum from his turgid penis as she deftly caught it in his wet diaper. The orgasm seemed to last an eternity, he emptied himself into the moist diaper cupped around his balls and penis. He felt like his life, his very manhood was being drained into her hand, the conflicts and contradictions of his existence were resolved in one final moment of blissful rapture, leaving his inner child at rest and peace. He fell back on the rug, completely spent. His mind drifted in the afterglow while she picked up his legs and finished changing his diaper. She put her hand under his feet and was somehow able to hold both of them with one hand. He felt his legs being lifted off the soggy diaper beneath him, and somehow it felt peculiar, different from when he played baby alone. He supposed that the experience felt odd because this was the first time he had ever played baby with anyone else. He felt every inch a baby. Her joke about his fantasy becoming reality was tantalizingly close. She appeared so serious he almost believed her. Even though she was kneeling on the floor, Kathy appeared to tower over him, making him feel small and helpless. She radiated an aura of maternal self-confidence and power that he found both alluring and overpowering. He felt like she was transmogrifying him, that he had physically regressed into the baby he had always wanted to be. The sight of her smiling face hovering tenderly over him made him feel loved and secure for the first time in his adult life. Kathy loves me, he told himself, she'll take care of me. I shouldn't have worried about talking her into playing baby games. She looks like she's enjoying herself too. She doesn't seem to mind changing my diapers and letting me drink from baby bottles. I wonder if she'll bathe me when we're finished. As he lay on the floor musing about what she might do next, Kathy cleansed his pubes with a disposable baby wipe. Brian was astonished at how quickly she had adapted to the game. It was as if she, like him, had been waiting all her life to play. He was completely under her control. Brian delighted in the passive acceptance of her loving ministrations. He gazed up at her and saw not his wife, but the ideal mother he had needed, but never had. He realized with a mild shock that he was viewing Kathy from a child's perspective. Kathy was the personification of motherhood. She was awesome. Kathy seemed to grow in stature with every passing moment. The presence of his own personal mother goddess made it seem like the years of pain, worry and toil were rushing away from him. He felt like he was becoming even younger as she grew in maternal splendor. He was too again, then 18 months and finally only a year old. Even the furniture appeared to have become bigger. He wished she could pick him up bodily in her arms, cradling his diapered bottom with one hand and cuddling him to her bosom with the other. For the moment, he felt like he really had become her baby. He looked up at her and smiled languidly thinking that they would have to do this again. Slowly, Brian realized that he had to be at work in two hours. It was a shame it had to end, he thought with a frown. Mommy, he started to suggest that they should think about ending the game, but was stopped by the sound of his voice, the pitch had changed into a small child's and the rich masculine timber had simply vanished. He even sounded like a baby. He had read of rare instances of voice shifts among transvestites and transsexuals. Was something similar happening to him? Was the experience of playing baby so total that he had convinced his subconscious that he was a baby again? If that was the case, his voice would shift back once they stopped playing the game. It's... It's almost time for me to go to work, mommy. Can I get up and change clothes when you're finished, he piped. No, darling, was her reply as she worked the overlarge shirt over his head and down his arms, you hired a manager to run the business so you could have more time off remember? You don't have to worry your little head about the business. She'll take care of everything for you. You'll never have to work again, sweetie, she added happily as she slipped the folded diaper under his bottom and pulled it up between his legs. Yes, mommy. 
I'll stay here and be your baby, he said agreeably. She doesn't want to stop either, he thought. It only takes me 15 minutes to get dressed and it takes another 15 minutes to drive to work. We can play another hour and a half before we have to stop. Besides, she's right. I'm the boss. I can be as late as I want. Marge can take care everything for me until I get there. I'm paying her to be the manager, aren't I? He lay back and luxuriated in the experience of being diapered by his wife and pondered, I wonder where she bought these diapers, I've never seen anything like them. These aren't anything like the diaper I was wearing before. They have the same look and feel as flannelette diapers made for babies. Brian felt his legs pushed apart by the diaper's thick, soft folds. These cloth diapers aren't as thin as the ones I've been using, he thought as she pinned one side of his diaper. They're so bulky they make me bow-legged. If I try to walk, I'll waddle like a one-year-old and fall. I'll have to crawl to the bathroom to change, he sulked. He reached over and picked up his glasses lying on the floor next to him, he had taken them off when he lay down on the floor to let her change his diapers. Holding them with both hands, Brian spread the arms off the glasses and put them on. The glasses promptly slid sideways off his nose and to one side of his face. Brian attempted to straighten them on his nose, only to have them fall on the other side of his face. He couldn't understand it, the glasses had become too big to fit his face. They were enormous. His wife smiled tolerantly at his feeble struggle to put on his glasses, he looked so adorable playing with them. She gently removed them from his face and put them on the floor behind her saying, you don't need these now Brian, babies don't wear glasses. Mommy will put these away for you until you grow up. The experience with his glasses had frightened Brian badly. Something was very wrong. He wanted the game to stop now. I've changed my mind, Kathy. I don't want to play this game anymore. I want to go to work, he simpered. She smiled maternally and said, it's much too late to change your mind, darling, then finished putting the last pin in his diaper. You're a baby now and that's all there is to it. Don't worry darling, it won't be so bad. We have plenty of money, you don't really need to work. You're just in a rut. Mommy has the cure for that. She'll keep you so busy with baby experiences you won't be able to get bored. Mommy will take you visiting and let you meet all of her friends' babies. You'll make lots of new friends your age. Mommy will buy lots of baby toys to keep you occupied. You'll see. You'll forget all about working. In a month or so you probably won't remember you ever had a job. Since this is your first day as Mommy's baby, Mommy has something special planned for you. This afternoon, I've invited some of my friends to bring their babies here for you to play with. I want all my friends to see what a darling baby I have. Mommy will dress you in a diaper and baby blue panties and nothing else so Mommy's friends can see your cute little body. You'll look so adorable crawling around the floor in your diapers with the other babies. You can watch the other babies and learn to crawl and suck your thumb just like all of Mommy's friends' babies. Mommy wouldn't want you to feel out of place when she takes you visiting. We'll put you in a playpen with the other tots where you can act as babyish as you want. Won't it be fun to stand at the side of the playpen and pee your diaper in front of everyone? Mommy will pretend she's busy and ask one of her friends to change your diady. You've always been so proud of your masculine endowments. Now everyone will be able to see just what you've got. If you're good, Mommy will let you stay out of the playpen to visit with her friends. They'll bounce you on their knees and tickle you and make a big fuss over you. Isn't that what you've always wanted? Maybe one of Mommy's friends who is nursing will give you a little titty. You'd like that. Mommy knows how much you like to suck on Mommy's titties. Her mocking tone piqued Brian and he decided to end the game once and for all. He wiggled and kicked his legs in a futile attempt to get up and change for work. He couldn't get up. What had happened to him? He grabbed her hand to pull himself up and was shocked to find he could barely grasp two of her fingers in his fist. He stared at his hand next to hers. It had shrunk. 
Instead of an adult male hand holding hers there was only a tiny baby's hand less than half the size of hers grasping her fingers. He really was a baby. She wasn't kidding. Oh my god, he thought in sudden realization. She put something in the cocoa that regressed me into babyhood. He was completely in her power. She hadn't been feeding him that malarkey just to titillate him, she really intended to humiliate him in front of all her friends. She'd make him play on the rug with her friend's babies wearing nothing but a diaper. He grimaced in annoyance. He knew that sooner or later he'd have to pee in his diaper. In a room full of mothers a wet diaper would be noticed immediately. Within minutes everyone would be laughing at his childishness. He'd never be able to look them in the eye again. He saw her scheme now. She planned to break his spirit so she would have a weak, pliant baby to mother. He looked up into her face in desperation and saw the triumphant grin on her face. Kathy removed her fingers from his grasp and watched him kick his legs petulantly in the air. He looks so winsome when he's worried. The girls will think he's enchanting, she thought. It was obvious from his expression that Brian understood the full implications of what she had planned for him this afternoon. Good. The sooner he accepts his new role the better, Kathy thought. Once he appreciates the fact that he really is a baby again, he'll be much easier to take care of. Until then, I'll have to watch him carefully to make sure he doesn't try to run away. Kathy giggled at the thought of him crawling furiously down the street trying to escape her care. He wouldn't have a chance. Any woman who saw him would stop and retrieve him for her. He'd discover that he now inhabited a world populated by adult women and their helpless babies. Kathy wondered how long it would be until she had to paddle him. Not long, she suspected. He'd soon learn that she was the mommy and he'd do as she said. Kathy smiled in anticipation. She was enjoying her role as his firm but loving mommy. Please, Kathy, he wailed pitifully, don't show me to your friends. I don't want to play the baby game anymore. She took on a serious expression and she said, being a baby is not a game, sweetheart, as you're about to find out. You'll sit in your playpen quietly while mommy talks to her friends. You'll discover how frustrating it is to be a bystander while someone else makes decisions for you. I can picture you now, sitting in your diaper, slobber dripping off your chin, while my friends and I discuss which daycare centre I should enrol you in. He shuddered at the thought of being enrolled in a daycare. No, no, no Kathy. I don't want to go to a daycare, he snivelled. Poor baby, she told him mockingly, doesn't mommy's little baby want to go and play with all the other babies in the daycare centre? Mommy will pack your didy bag with lots of clean diapers and panties. She'll even put in some baby food and formula for your lunch. You'll be able to play all day without having to worry about nasty old work. You'll even get to take a nap after lunch. Just think, a daycare is a place run by women whose only job is to pamper you. There'll always be someone there to take care of you when you need something. I don't need anyone to take care of me, he whined. Of course you do, honey. You're an infant. You have to be nurtured and cared for like any other infant. Babies are completely dependent on their mommies for everything, just as you are now. You needn't be embarrassed about having to wear diapers in front of strangers. You'll see that women don't think of babies as rational humans, they're only small, helpless creatures who have to be looked after. And babies need to be taken care of, they can't take care of themselves. They have to be fed, dressed, bathed and have their diapers changed and their dirty bottoms cleaned. Besides, you don't have any say in the matter. Babies aren't allowed to make choices, their mommies make all the decisions for them, all the way down to the food they eat and the clothes they wear. Every woman knows that her baby is just an adorable little living doll to dress up and show off to other mommies. That's why their mommies find the cutest, most adorable clothes for them, no matter how silly and foolish it makes them look. No one cares about a baby's opinion. It won't be long before you think that peeing and pooping in your diaper is the height of your day. You'll love messing in your diapers. 
No one will be surprised to see you standing in your playpen and giggling while you take a dump in your didy. Of course, as a baby, you'll have no privacy, personal or otherwise. If someone thinks you've peed in your diaper, then they'll stick their fingers down your diaper to check. If your diaper is wet or dirty, then off it comes in front of everyone. Everyone knows that babies have no sense of modesty. That's why their mommies let them toddle naked around the house in front of everyone. There's nothing quite as enchanting to a woman as watching a baby's adorable little tush as he totters away from her. If it's a naked little boy, so much the better. A baby boy's wee-wee isn't vulgar, it's only sweet. I know my friends will think your little wee-wee is adorable. She shook her head ruefully and said, No honey, you won't be playing the baby game anymore. You've become an actual baby. You're going to be mommy's precious little baby for the rest of your life. She tickled his tummy, making him wriggle convulsively. The thought of spending the rest of his life as a helpless, dependent infant made him shiver in terror. Please Kathy, don't make me stay a baby. I'm a man. Please don't diaper me, he began to sob. He watched in horror as she put her hands through the leg holes of a pair of soft white plastic baby panties and slipped them over his feet, sliding them down his legs and over his knees. He kicked his legs in impotent frustration and whimpered through his sobs, I'm not a baby. Take them off. Please Kathy, I'll be good. I'll never ask to play baby again. Ignoring his protests, she smiled a motherly smile and gently shook her head, no, while pulling the panties over his diaper. She tucked the edge of the panties over the top of his diaper. There you go, darling. These will keep your diaper from leaking. We wouldn't want you to pee all over your nice new shirt, would we, she said, patting the front of the bulging panty-covered diaper. Please Kathy, change me back, I don't want to be a baby, he bawled. He continued to cry as she drew the bottom of his diaper shirt up between his legs, fastened it at his waist and picked him up. His wife held him to her with one hand under his bottom supporting him and the other around his back. She looked at him sadly and said, I'm sorry, honeybunch. Only time can make you a man again. That is, if I don't decide to regress you into a baby again in a few years. His weeping became an uncontrollable wail as he realized she would never let him grow up. She intended to keep him as her baby forever. This wasn't his fantasy of being cared for by a loving mommy. Somehow what had started as a pleasant daydream had been turned into a horrible, twisted nightmare. He sobbed hysterically as she paced the room and made sympathetic noises while patting his back and comforting him. When he quieted, she took him into his den next to the master bedroom. Brian was shocked to see she had redecorated it as a baby's room, complete with dressing table and crib. Everything that had made it his den, his final place of refuge against the outside world, had been stripped away. His cluttered, disorganized bookcases were gone. The old, dark, masculine decor had been transformed into a light, airy, nursery atmosphere. The walls had been repainted a light blue-white and a border of cute baby bunnies scampered around the room at chest height. In place of his crammed filing cabinets, he saw a changing table fully stocked with baby powder, wipes, and stacks of clean diapers. His comfortable, tattered easy chair had vanished, in its place was a large wooden rocking chair with a baby blue receiving blanket neatly folded and draped over the back. The dingy reading lamp in the corner by the chair had been replaced with a brand new folding playpen propped neatly against the wall. Even the musty smell of stale pipe tobacco and slowly decaying books had been commuted into the fresh scent of baby powder and clean diapers. She sat down in the rocking chair with him on her lap and propped him against her arm. She took a baby bottle from her rear pocket and pushed the nipple into his mouth. Brian struggled against her briefly then became limp in utter defeat. Come on, honey, she said, drink your formula for mommy. Be a good baby and suck on your baba. He suckled slowly, hoping that she would tire of this game and let him be a man again. As the formula trickled down his throat, Brian realized how hungry he was. He was surprised at how good it tasted, he had always thought baby formula would have a disgusting flavor. 
It made his stomach feel so warm and, well, comfortable. The feel of the nipple in his mouth was strangely consoling. He began to suck on the nipple eagerly and was amazed at how quickly he finished the bottle. She took the empty bottle from his hands, burped him, then put him into his crib and tucked him in. Within minutes, the combination of emotional exhaustion and the warm formula had put Brian in a deep slumber. She bent over the crib and tenderly stroked his hair amid his soft snores, then blew him a kiss before turning, picking up the playpen and carrying it out of the nursery with her. When he awoke, he discovered that he had been sucking his thumb in his sleep. He pulled it out in disgust and pushed against the mattress to get up on his knees. When he rocked back on his heels, his diaper squished wetly between his legs. He had peed his diaper in his sleep. The weight of the diaper pulled at his waist, he hadn't just peed a little, he had soaked it. If he hadn't been wearing the plastic panties, he would have soaked his clothes and bed as well. He cried softly for a while in frustration, then decided to ask his wife to change him. It was humiliating, but he didn't know what else to do. He called out to her for help and was surprised to find that instead of a loud shout he could only make small gurgling baby noises. He was losing the ability to speak. Brian screamed in infantile fury, screaming his rage at what his wife had done to him. Kathy had no right to do this to me, he thought, it was only a game. I didn't mean it. How could she do this to me? I'm her husband, not her baby. She entered the room and beamed down at him. I see my little sleepyhead has woken up. Does mommy's baby need his diddy changed? She lifted him out of the crib and took him over to the changing table and laid him on his back. Within minutes, she had removed sodden diaper and was cleaning his bare bottom. I've been going through your old things this morning, Brian. Since they won't fit you now that you're a baby, I'm going to give away all your old clothes to the Salvation Army. He noticed she was looking at him intently, her eyes seeming to bore into his head, searching for confirmation of something she already knew. By the way, Brian, I found all your DPF stories last week in your filing cabinet. You know what else I found, baby? I found a hypnosis tape to turn you into a bedwetter. She chuckled and said, I guess you won't need that now. I also found a suitcase full of baby clothes, plastic pants and diapers in adult sizes. I'm going to send everything back to DPF. Except for the adult diapers, she smiled broadly, they'll make good lap pads. Brian's head spun in panic. She had found his books and adult baby clothes. He'd never convince her that it was just a game he had recently invented. She had known about everything before he had talked her into playing with him. He wanted to escape, to find somewhere to hide from her thoughtful gaze. She knew everything he had been doing in secret all these years. He moaned in shame. There had to be somewhere he could go, some place where no one knew about his desires. Some place safe where nothing would hurt him. His head reeled and he closed his eyes hoping it was all a bad dream. Maybe if he explained to her about his love of diapers, that what she had found was just a harmless hang-up. He decided that if he spoke slowly and enunciated clearly, he should still be able to talk, but when he tried all that came out was, do, gara. Do ba gee. She snickered and said, Bribri has already forgotten how to talk, hasn't he? Hush baby and be still while mommy finishes changing your diaper. He squeezed his eyes shut as all the petty humiliations of his babyhood returned to him. He was drowning in his memories. There had to be some escape. He felt nauseated and dull, unable to think. The thick-wittedness was gradually replaced by a tranquil serenity which spread like a soft, woolly baby blanket, snuggling his mind with a feeling of warmth and security. He tried to fight it, but he lacked the mental strength to resist. He closed his eyes and relaxed on the changing table in submission. A rivet of baby slobber dribbled from the side of his mouth as he relinquished his awareness to this new feeling. There you go baby, she said as she pulled a clean set of panties over his diaper. She picked him up from the changing table and stood him in the crib. Mommy will be back in a few minutes, honey. 
she's going to make you a nice breakfast of baby cereal and formula. Why don't you play in your crib with your stuffed animals until mommy gets back? Brian looked around the crib in confusion, the sides were lined with fuzzy plush toys just begging to be hugged. He picked up a stuffed rabbit and rubbed its velveteen fabric against his face absently. He smiled in unconscious enjoyment and softly cooed. A wave of dizziness struck him and he clutched the crib rail to keep from falling. Brian frowned in thought, there was something he had wanted, some place he had wanted to go. He couldn't remember. He drooled and tried to snatch at a sunbeam that sparkled in front of his face. It was too difficult to try and concentrate on anything for too long. Everything looked so new and wonderful. He felt a strange urgency behind him. He bent his knees and allowed the pressure that had been building within him to release. Brian grinned childishly as the soft baby poop oozed from his behind and began to fill his diaper. Kathy returned and upon seeing the expression on his face asked, Bree Bree honey, what are you doing? Brian gazed at her quizzically and said, Kara. Kathy smiled gently and asked, Is Bree Bree trying to say mommy's name? Babies aren't supposed to call their mommies by name. I'm your mommy now. Try and say, Mama, for mommy. Brian pursed his lips with a look of intense concentration, then raised his arms and gushed, C-A, 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 grinning gleefully in success. Kathy looked surprised, then mouthed a silent, oh, of sudden understanding. She laughed and said, that's mommy's good baby, then bent over to kiss his forehead. She took him out of his crib and settled him on her hip with one leg in front and the other behind her. Mommy will change your diddy after you've eaten, sweetie pie. Right now, it's time to feed Bree Bree his first breakfast as mommy's baby, she said as she carried him to the kitchen. Bree Bree bubbled his joy as he saw the brightly coloured high chair waiting to receive him into his new life. 